To Chef Susie, we do it live every Friday, 4 p.m., and we're coming at you from the UNR Extension. Nevada Extension is where I work. I work in the school district here in Clark County, and I teach nutrition education. Now we're taking it virtual, and we're doing it right here from my kitchen. We're always keeping our recipes super simple, very easy to make, and totally healthy. So today we're making a cashew chicken stir fry. And we're following it with a dessert that is so decadent and so easy to make. And they're called Oreo cookie balls. But before we get started, let's start with our quote of the day. Our quote of the day is from FDR Franklin D. Roosevelt. And he states, the only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. And I just love taking these great quotes from our U.S. presidents because they're just so timeless. Also, I always like to point out some ways that people have showed signs of strength during the pandemic. And one of those are people showing up for each other. And one way that people showed up for each other was in New York City at an assisted living center. We had a group of people have a sign-up sheet where some of the residents that needed help signed up and some of the residents that were offering help signed up. So they were able to help each other run errands, get medications, and whatever people needed. And it was so great because those people are in possible exposure of risk for immuno, they're immunocompromised. So they have a risk of exposure. So keeping those people out of the public was a great idea. And having that sign up sheet was awesome. And it was called a com community support sign up, which I thought was such a great idea. So I wanted to pass that on. So let's get back to our recipes. Today, we're making cashew chicken stir fry, followed by a dessert called Oreo cookie balls. Next week on Friday, May 29th, we'll be making Earl Grey French toast, a blueberry almond muffin, and the Green Grinch smoothie. Will be his first time on YouTube doing his green, very popular smoothie. We did it all over the school district. It was a big hit, so let's do it again. So again, if you wanna see some of the old videos, you can always go, we used to be on Facebook twice a week, Mondays and Fridays. So you could go to the Extension Clark Facebook page and you can see all of the videos that we made from March. We made some great recipes. They were fun. We danced, we sang, we had a good time. And I've been getting great responses from people all over the country of the pictures of the recipes that they made in their home, in their home with their family, which is really great to know. So let's get started. This is a cashew chicken stir fry and I tried to make it super healthy and it's super simple to make. We're gonna use these amino, liquid aminos, which is tastes just like soy sauce, except it's not. It's made with amino acids, which are very important because they build protein. They are the building blocks. So we're gonna be using liquid aminos. We're also gonna be cooking today with grapeseed oil, much like olive oil, except this is a great temperature, high heat cooking oil. And it's a great flavor. It's very light and it's so easy to work with and it's actually has more vitamin E than olive oil. 
So I thought we'd start with that. So to get this recipe started, let's mise en place. Let's get everything set up. So our sauce is gonna be a half of an orange, some liquid aminos. Also, our sauce is also gonna have balsamic vinegar. Put this over here. It's gonna have some local honey. And that's it, four ingredients. So that's the sauce. And then we're gonna also add some fresh garlic to that salt. So I'll put the garlic over here. So this is for our sauce. Then we're gonna move it over to the side and we're gonna to get together with the ingredients we need for this recipe. For some reason on my YouTube page, I have a big blue screen that says support assist for home PCs version 3.5. Can you guys see me still, even though that blue is on my screen? Let me know if you guys can see me. If you guys can't see me because that screen's in the way, just let me know. It looks like you can see me, great. So we've got our sauce mise en place over here. And then for the recipe itself, we'll use some whole cashews. We're gonna also use some chicken breasts that I've already pre-cut up over here. And then we're gonna use some bean sprouts, a half of an onion. We're gonna use some zoodles. That's right, let's get our zoodles going. This right here is an item purchased from Pampered Chef and that's how you make zoodles, which is spaghetti squash, spaghetti zucchini. And there's so many different ways you can make this. They have the little vegetis, but this one's super cool and it makes the spaghetti so easy to work with. Let's try it out. This is a yellow squash. I'm gonna put this one right in here. I'm gonna put it down. I'm just gonna roll it out and let's see what happens. We're gonna use this in our chicken cashew. Now, typically you would want maybe some noodles, rice noodles, but I was trying to keep this super delicious and super healthy. So I figured why not do it with spaghetti squash or zucchini noodles, otherwise known as zoodles. So I'm going to get a nice zoodle here from the squash, and then I'll get some from the zucchini. So look how nice these came out, beautiful. So I'll put these here in this bowl. And we'll also make, they come out really nice and they're gonna taste just like noodles, which they will look like as well. Now we're gonna put into our spiralizer, A, some of this zucchini. This is a green zucchini. So I'm gonna cut the zucchini ends off. And then I'm gonna put that zucchini right into the spiralizer. Let's put it right in here. And this spiralizer is from Ruthie. Ruthie, if you're here, I wanna say hi. And thank you for letting us borrow this beautiful spiralizer for this recipe today. And she did buy this Pampered Chef. And we also have a Pampered Chef consultant here. Hi, Sherry. You wanna let everybody know how much this costs or, and how they can find your link on Pampered Chef? <laughs> I have a couple ingredients here from Pampered Chef. Well, first of all, I'm waiting for my awesome can opener. And I'm also using this, Sherry, have you ever seen one of these? This is a great measuring cup idea from Pampered Chef as well. Anyway, back to this zucchini. So why am I working with zucchini? Well, let's see. Zucchini is the only fruit that starts with a Z. Yes, it's a fruit. And it's called zucca, which is an Italian word. Italians, this was developed in Italy in the 1920s. By the way, one zucchini is called a zucchina. That's a little information for you. So I've got this beautiful zucchini all spiralized out. I'm gonna put it right in this bowl, because, this bowl here because it's gonna be part of our recipe. So now that we've got that mise en place, we can move this over. We spiralized, it was fun guys. So let's make the sauce first. Alrighty. Let's, oh yeah, we're gonna actually, we're gonna mix in with this zucchini and squash, the onion. This is a half of a white onion. And before I start crying again, like I always do live with you guys, always crying over here over the onions, I'm just gonna slice it out into little half moon slices, nice and thin. And I'm gonna add it right to this bowl because it's all gonna become one. The onions in this dish is what made it taste so good to me. It really did. So don't forget the onions. So I've got a half of an onion here that I'm just slicing thin. I'm gonna put it right into this bowl and add it to the zucchini and squash. And then we're also gonna use some green onions, which you can't go wrong. We're gonna use that for the garnish as well. So now that I've got my thin sliced onions, I'm just gonna add them right here to this bowl. So, so far in this bowl, I've got my spaghetti squash, I've got zucchini, and I've got half of a white onion. 
that I just sliced so it would come down looking like this. That's all. I'm gonna throw these in here. That's all prepped. Now let's throw in some green onions. This is the best. For the garnish, it's gonna make this dish pop. So I'm just gonna do about three slices of that and put them right here on top. So I've got this all prepped. I'm also gonna add in my half a cup of bean sprouts and I'll put these right in the bowl as well. So we're all ready to go. You can find these bean sprouts located in the produce section of your grocery store. So in this bowl, guys, I've got my zucchini, my squash, my green onions, and I've got my white onion. Now I'm gonna move over and I'm gonna set this aside and move over to my sauce. So the sauce we're gonna to put together right here in this measuring cup with this whisk, and we're gonna whisk it together. So what do we need? We need a half of an orange. This is a fresh orange, and I'm just gonna freshly squeeze it right here in this juicer. And this is what's gonna make this dish pop as well. A beautiful, packed with vitamin C, orange. You can't go wrong. Our recipes are always boosting the immune system as usual. So I've got my fresh half of an orange. Next up, we're gonna add a tablespoon of local honey. Honey is gonna, again, make this dish nice and sweet like we need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a tablespoon of local honey right here and put it right in here. So, so far guys, I'm doing my sauce, which is a half of an orange, a tablespoon of honey. And next up, we're gonna go for the balsamic vinegar. vinegar. The balsamic vinegar is gonna be one, let's see here, we're gonna use three teaspoons. So three teaspoons of balsamic vinegar. Now you can use any kind you like. This is just the balsamic ammonia. Whoa, there's one, two. I'll take this one out and I'll throw this one in the trash over here. You can't go wrong with this dish, guys. It's balsamic, it's orange juice, it's gonna be awesome. Even if you put a little extra or a little less, it's gonna be great. So I've got my balsamic, my orange, and next up we're gonna use these liquid aminos. How much? We're gonna use two ounces. Get my Pampered Chef ounces over here, and I'm gonna measure this out to two ounces. It's not a lot, guys, not a lot at all. There's two ounces of liquid aminos. Next up, we're gonna whisk this together, and this is gonna be your sauce. And <laughs> Ralph's over here freaking out, guys, because we made this dish already, but it needed garlic so bad that we added the minced garlic in. So I am gonna add this minced garlic right into the sauce. He's jumping up and down. Don't forget the garlic. We got the garlic, Ralph, thank you. All righty. So I've got the minced garlic. How much garlic are we using, guys? One teaspoon. So I've got my sauce for this cashew chicken stir fry. A half of an orange, a tablespoon of local honey, a teaspoon of minced garlic, and we also had the two ounces of liquid aminos. Look just like this. And now we've got our sauce. It's all prepped and ready. Next up, guys, let's work with these cashews. What are we gonna do first? Our first move, is we're gonna roast these cashews because you're not gonna believe what it does to the smell of your kitchen and roasted cashews, you just cannot go wrong. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. I'm gonna actually bring you a little closer to me and I'm gonna cook with you right here in front of me. I'm gonna move my stuff to the side and I'm gonna actually bring my cooking pan right here to you. And we're gonna go ahead and get our pan nice and heated. This is on, let's see here. This is, and, uh, okay, just a moment folks, we're gonna plug in this inductor and we, looks like we're looking for the cord. <laughs> this is what's fun about being on YouTube because we're live and we're a good time. We keep it easy, we keep it simple, we keep it resourceful. But our first move, guys, we're going to get this plugged in. This is a beautiful inductor that was given to me by the state so I can work right in front of you, hot, live, and right in front of you, right in your face. We actually prepped this dish earlier today on this to make sure it got hot enough and to make sure it was going to work for this dish, and it did. So we're going to get this plugged in in just a moment here. Ralph is looking for the extension cord that we left outside. When George was here, hi, George, if you're here, we left it outside. And we're gonna get started here. There we go. 
right. <laughs> Welcome to the live Sh Susie show. <laughs> All right, we're plugged in, guys. <laughs> Ready to go. <laughs> we're turned on. Let's get this thing, make sure it's starting to get hot. Yes, it is. So over here on this burner, guys, I'm going to start my boiled water. And this boiled water is for the dessert. So don't even worry about what this boiled water for because we're going to use it later on. But for this dish here, I'm going to go ahead and get my pan onto the burner. And I'm going to start with a tablespoon and a half of grapeseed oil. The reason why I'm using just a tablespoon and a half is because it really is great on high heat and it's going to be great for these cashews. Our first move today, guys, we're going to roast those cashews. Roasting the cashews is super important because it gives that dish not too crunchy of an experience, but the right amount of crunch and the flavor that's left in this grapeseed oil from the fact that we cooked the, wall, the cashews in it, that's a game changer too. So we're waiting for our grapeseed oil to get hot, which by the way, grapeseed oil, excellent benefits for you. It's a great source of vitamin E, it has more vitamin E than extra virgin olive oil. It's a fat soluble antioxidant that protects cells from damaging free radicals. And you can actually put grapeseed oil directly on your skin as a topical ointment. It's so good for your skin. It's got omega-6 fatty acids. It's reasonably priced. It's made from grape seeds, pressed grape seeds. It's neutral in taste and it's an MVP in the kitchen. Yes, it is. It's the most valuable player in the kitchen because it cooks on high heat. You're gonna love this difference in your life when you switch over to the grapeseed oil. You can do it in stir fry, vinaigrettes, cooking, sauteing, baking, because of that high smoke point that it can take about 425 degrees, which is the same of a medium high heat pan, which this sounds like, oh God, I think it's getting nice and hot. So we're gonna dump in our raw cashews and we did about a half a cup of raw cashews. Now we're gonna let those get nice and warm and saute them. Then we're gonna take them out of the oil and then we're gonna add in our chicken. Now with the chicken guys, very important over here. So I bought chicken breast and the chicken breast already came in these long, thin, nice thin pieces. Then I went ahead and cut them into little squares like this, little tiny thin squares, just like an Asian stir fry would be. And that's the move here. Make sure it's nice and pounded out thin if you didn't already buy it that way. So after these cashews cook, we're gonna go ahead and remove them, keep the cashew flavor in that oil and add the chicken. Then after that, we're gonna take that away, put the nuts and the chicken to the side and start sauteing our vegetables, which is gonna be your squash, your zucchini, your onion, your green onions, and that's gonna be delicious. Then we'll add it all together with the sauce and you're gonna have a cashew chicken that is to die for. We had it for lunch today, it was delicious. We just wanted to make sure, tune it and make sure it was fine tuned and delicious for you. And I also wanted to make sure there were some healthy ingredients for you to enjoy. Um, so that's it. We've got our cashews cooking here over in the grapeseed oil. And then we're going to step it over. And after these get nice and brown, we're waiting for this water to boil. What's happening over here, guys, is our dessert today is called Oreo cookie balls, which is the easiest dessert to make. And I'm so mad about how good it tastes. I am so mad that it came out so delicious that I just can't believe it. So the trick to these Oreo cookie balls is to keep them in the freezer. And if my sister's watching, I hope yours are still in your freezer. Mine are. So all we're gonna do with these cookie balls is we're gonna add a whole package of Oreos and we're gonna leave about four cookies out of that package to reserve for the garnish. But that whole package of Oreos is gonna go into a blender with a whole package of fat-free cream cheese. We're gonna blend that together. It's gonna to turn itself into a great dough that we're gonna roll into balls. And then we're gonna roll those balls into this melted chocolate right here. And then that's it. It's a no bake Oreo cookie recipe. So I'm gonna move these nuts around a little bit over here. Make sure they're all, you can start to smell the aroma. It is amazing. And if we have any questions there, maybe Ralph can check out to see if there's any questions. I've got my whole nutrition team here that can answer any of your questions as well. I also have Miss Ruthie here. She loves to answer questions. And if anybody, ha hey mom, I see you. Thanks for showing up mom, thanks for finding me. So a little story behind me, these are my vegetable friends. I've got Mr. Mushroom, Radish, Corns. I've got Mr. Celery. I've got over here my Pearl Onion. 
And these are all my friends. I've got my beats. They were given to me by Liz from Quiet Storm Foundation. She found them and she said I had to have them. So I hung them up and made them part of my shell. Those are my friendly vegetables. So if I was in front of the students, we'd be going over about what they know about them and what they taste like and how they've used them in recipes. And this becomes a very fun chef demonstration. So I've got my raw whole cashews being sauteed. They don't take long, guys. You'll start hearing them pop and sizzle. And once that happens, they're softening up is what they're doing. And they're just about ready to remove from the flame. So I'll remove these cashews and I'll leave that oil in there, that flavor of the cashews for later on because we're gonna need it for our chicken. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all my cashews right here into this little ramekin. And then we're gonna go ahead and get started with the chicken breast. Again, on the chicken breast, it was super important how you cut it. You want to think about, pretend that you're in an Asian restaurant and that you ordered a chicken dish. Remember how the chicken's cut there and how it's a perfect bite size. Exactly what we did here, a perfect bite size. So I've got my beautiful dry cashews out of the oil, and I'm going to go ahead and put my chicken in. So these chickens, like I said, are nice and thin in little square pieces so they can be nice and bite-sized. So we're gonna saute that chicken up. Into that grapeseed oil. Because it still has the flavor from the cashews. So the chicken's gonna saute. All we're gonna do is brown it on both sides because we're gonna cook it a little longer with the vegetables later. Now remember, grapeseed oil is great on high heat. It's gonna be great in your kitchen. You're gonna enjoy it too. So once this chicken browns on both sides, I'm gonna take it away from the heat and then I'm gonna add in my vegetables. The vegetables are already prepared and they're right there. Remember the vegetables. We've got our spiralized zucchini called noodles, spiralized squash, half of a white onion, and we've got our green onions. We're also going to use green onions as a garnish as well. So we're just browning this chicken on both sides. We've got our sauce already made. And if you're just tuning in, this sauce was so easy. All it was, again, was a half of an orange, two ounces of liquid aminos. We used balsamic vinegar and we used some raw local honey. It was a very simple sauce that we're gonna use for this easy, simple, healthy cashew chicken dish. Of course, you could serve this over brown rice or white rice or quinoa, but I loved it with the noodles. It was great. It didn't even need to have that extra starch. Just moving this around, getting it browned on both sides. You can smell that beautiful grapeseed oil working the chicken perfectly. You can't mess this chicken up because it's so thin and so little. Alrighty. Chicken's almost ready for me to pull out of the pot. In the meantime, let me check out my boiling water. Ooh, it looks good. Yeah. Okay, the chicken's just about ready for me to remove from the cooktop. And I'm going to show this chicken. It looks just about like this. Just little tiny. Maybe I can even bring it a little closer for you. A beautiful chicken. I'm going to take this chicken that's cooked and browned in the grapeseed oil. I'm going to add it to this bowl, leaving in that liquid because we're going to use that same liquid to do our vegetables. So over here, I've got my chicken. And I'll add my cashews to this chicken. And then I'll move on to the vegetables. I'll put my raw sauteed cashews right in with it. So I've got that one ready to go. I'll mix over here and I'll switch. And I'll dump in my zucchini noodles, my zoodles, my squash, my half of a white onion, and my green onions. And look at how beautiful they are. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. This is going to be about five minutes, guys.
it soften up. It's going to soften up and it's starting to take a noodle feel to it, except it's not noodles. It's a beautiful vegetable called zucchini. Zucchini can be grilled, grated, raw, cooked, steamed, baked. It's got fiber, anti-inflammatory. It's got, it regulates your digestion. I mean, in France, they call it a courgette. In South Africa, they call it a baby marrow, but it's an Italian word called zucca. They come in dark green, light green, orange, yellow. Remember, the darker are the richer in nutrients. We have a question, Ralph? Yes, how many calories per serving do you think this is? Okay, you guys ready for this? You're not gonna believe it. So, one cup of zucchini is 18 calories, whereas one cup of pasta is 197 calories. Wait, it gets better. One cup of zucchini is four grams of carbs, whereas one baked potato is 40 grams of carbs. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Um, unbelievable. So you can really just change your whole life by cooking with zucchini noodles instead of actual pasta. It's that big of a difference. So I'm sauteing this. we got about a minute or two left. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my chicken and my whole cashews and my sauce. Okay. Looks beautiful, by the way. The smell, I mean, look at this. Before I even add it, look at how gorgeous that is. It's just so simple, so easy. And now I'm going to add my cashews and my cooked chicken. I'm going to let this saute. And now I'm going to add my sauce. And it's going to work for about five to seven minutes after I add the sauce. Remember, the sauce was very easy. It was a half of an orange, liquid aminos, balsamic, and we put some minced garlic in there. So now that I put the sauce in there, it smells amazing. And it quiet down a little bit. You don't hear the saute, but it's still cooking. So you just want to keep moving it around, keep it moving, and let it saute. Now, while this is going to saute, I'm going to get started with our dessert. Our water is completely boiling. So I'm going to add some of these mega chunk chocolates. You can use dark chocolate, white chocolate, whatever melting chocolate you want to use. We're going to go ahead and use these chocolates and we're going to get it melted. We need melted chocolate for our dessert. The dessert today, guys, like I said, I am so upset at it. I'm so mad that the dessert came out that good. I really am. Ridiculous. So I'm going to work my chocolate and I'm going to keep moving it. Letting it get nice and melty. If you follow me on Instagram, which is Rebel Nutrition for Life, the number four, um, then you'll see my nephew and I actually made these Oreo cookie balls over the weekend. He did them. He's six years old and he helped prep. He helped make them and they were too good to be true. Really good. So I've got that started. While this sits for another five, six minutes, I can go ahead and show you my Oreos. So this right here is a whole package of Oreos. This right here is a whole package of cream cheese. I let the cream cheese soften. These two right here are gonna go into a food processor and then we're just gonna roll them in the chocolate. It's three ingredients and like I said, I wish it wasn't so good. I didn't wanna do a recipe this good. Wow, came out really good. So I'm putting the whole package of Oreos into the food processor. That's right, guys, the whole package. I'm leaving out four cookies into a Ziploc bag that I'm going to crush for a garnish. That garnish is going to go on top of our balls. Yes, these are Oreo cookie balls. Oreos are vegan. A lot of people don't know that. Now, the cream cheese I used is not vegan, but from what I hear, there's some Greek yogurt cream cheeses that came on the market. I'm sure there's got to be a way to make this healthier. So I've got my whole package of Oreos. That was a whole package right in the food processor. Next, I'm going to add in my softened cream cheese. This is too simple. Three ingredients. And remember, we're going to put them in the freezer. I texted my sister last night and I said, what do you think of those Oreo cookie balls? She said, hold on, I haven't tried one yet. She went in the freezer. She texted me and said, they are, they're, she texted me with a capital T, a capital D, and a number four, to die for. I said, you're right, they really are. Unbelievable. So right now I'm just putting my cream cheese in here. 
I'm going to use a rubber spatula to get every bit of it. And that's it. Now, of course, you probably could add anything you want. We're going to add some sea salt on top of these. That's going to make them a game changer as well. So I've got this. Now I'm just going to put the lid on to my blender. And then I'm going to blend them. I'm going to move my chicken stir fry around a little bit. Now again, guys, I'm already going ahead of you and making this dessert out of the way. Okay. want to check on my creation here and it's going to turn into its own cookie dough but you want to kind of go in a couple times and, and push down the cream cheese make sure it's getting into all those oreos just kind of do a quality check on it and then you can put the lid back on there we go All right, guys, we'll put this aside and we're going to get together with our stir fry. The stir fry looks just about done. Now I'm going to need a plate to plate it with. Ralph, can you bring me a fresh plate, please? Here we go, right over here. Thank you. I'm going to put this chicken stir fry, <laughs> this cashew chicken stir fry into this dish over here. And I'm going to top it with the green onions. Now, this dish, guys, it feels like there's noodles there. There is, there is noodles, except they're not pasta. This is amazing. And Ruthie's gonna fly over, she's gonna get some of this today, delivered to her. And this is serving size for two people. And we're gonna top it with some of these beautiful green onions. So I've got my green onions here. And this right here is your cashew chicken stir fry. It's amazing. You remember all the ingredients it took to make it. It was simple, it was fun, and it's healthy. It's got some great ingredients. We learned how to work with grapeseed oil, which was awesome. And now we're working with our Oreo cookie balls. These Oreo cookie balls, I'm gonna see how this turned out. Oh yeah, it's nice. So like I said, guys, it turns out to be its own cookie dough. You're gonna need a cooking sheet, even though these are no-bake cookies. This is too hot for me to move, Ralph. I'm really sorry. It's too hot for me to move, okay? So this right here is a baking pan, and I'm gonna roll these cookies and put them on the baking pan. And then, because they're already in a beautiful cookie form, you just roll them. You can make them big, you can make them small. The move is to put them in the freezer for about 30 minutes and then roll them in the chocolate. That's the move. But since we don't have that kind of time here, we're gonna do it our way. I've already got my chocolate nice and melted, and I'm going to roll these balls right into the chocolate onto a large tablespoon. Now, the chocolate hardens immediately. So before it hardens, guys, you wanna hurry up and garnish it with those beautiful pieces of Oreo cookies. This dessert is gonna blow your mind. It really is. So I've got my Oreo cookies, and I'm just gonna use this mallet here. them up a little bit and then what you're going to do guys while they're still wet you're going to garnish them with some flakes of raw oreo cookie now this dessert looks like this when it's done these are right from my freezer these are beautiful oreo cookie balls they're hard from the chocolate on top of them and when you bite them it tastes like a truffle these are amazing it was fun cooking with you today we have a big mess to clean up my name is chef Susie. we keep it live on fridays 
We have a good time. And in our, our comments box are, is the whole nutrition team that works with me, which is so great to have that for backup. So you have a great day. We'll see you next Friday with the Earl, Ga Earl Gray French Toast, the Green Bridge Smoothie, and the Blueberry Almond Muffins. Have a great week. TGIF.